Hello. In this video, that was so proper of me. In this video, I'm going to teach you or give you an insight on the six ways you can make money as an artist. I have been doing this creative career thing for almost eight years now. I've done everything from making prints to designing wedding stationery, doing one-off original commissions, and then now teaching online courses and writing how-to books. And over the last eight years, I've been able to scale to revenue goals that I've never even envisioned when I first started would ever be possible. And so in this video, I'm going to give you a peek into six different ways you can make money as an artist. If you're an artist, this will apply or designer. And then if you're outside of artist designer type, this will also apply, but just tweak it a little bit. All right, so the first way is to sell your artwork. So that could be originals where you're commissioned by a client to do under certain um, design briefs, like they want it to be this size and they want it to be these specific colors. Maybe they're commissioning you to paint a floral piece or a portrait of their family, whatever it is you can be commissioned or you can pre-make and scan and print your own prints, your artwork on paper, printed on paper. So you could have them in an Etsy shop, you could have them on your website for sale, etc. So those first ways, that first way is to sell your artwork, whether it's an original piece that somebody pays you a specific dollar amount for, or you sell prints online in some sort of shop. This was in the early days for me, especially how I was able to generate more income and fill in the gaps between jobs because I was new on the scene. I didn't have many clients um, coming in. And so I was basically finding any way I could to make money off my artwork. And so you could, you know, list an Etsy shop and then promote it on Pinterest or social media. Pinterest is an amazing, amazing way for you to promote your website, your Etsy shop, whatever. I'll link to a Pinterest keyword research guide for you. This is going to be invaluable for getting your work discovered by the masses on Pinterest. Um, but this was how I was able to kind of make ends meet in the beginning was through prints and doing commission work um, from the random people once a month that would ask for me to do a custom piece for them. So huge way to fill in some gaps in income if you do commissioned work or you have some prints on the side that are just in the background making you money. And then the second way of making some money as an artist or designer is through licensing. Licensing, I've been doing licensing for the past couple years and I have a bunch of podcast episodes, a bunch of other YouTube videos also coming out on licensing, but I've done everything from yoga towels, this is my artwork on a yoga towel, um, to greeting cards with papyrus, I have done beer bottles, I have done planners and calendars and office supplies and home goods and textiles. Um, and this is a really fun way to not have the overhead of printing all of the work on prints and listing in, in your own shop. Um, working with a manufacturer, the manufacturer is the person or the company that makes the product. So you don't have to spend the money getting the prints printed or getting the cards printed or the yoga towels printed and made and packaged and sold on shelves. So the manufacturer that you work with is the one that is going to be directly making and manufacturing the product and then also working with the retailer to get it on shelves. And so licensing is an incredible way to make good money as an artist because you don't have that overhead. So even the first way that I mentioned with having prints in an Etsy shop or whatever, you still have that overhead that you have to pay for the printing costs up front before you make any sales. And so hopefully you make that money back, but if you don't, then you have that, you have to eat that cost. And so with licensing, there's little to no overhead as an artist. Um, and I teach you exactly how to get into licensing and how to scale your business through licensing in my course, Brand Plus Brand, which I teach with my licensing agent, Julie herself. So if you wanna get into licensing, it's an amazing way to make money as an artist and to also get your products or your artwork on products in shelves. Like this is, you know, in Papyrus. I also have some products coming out in Target and Staples and it's just incredible. Licensing is awesome. Another way for an artist or designer to make money is by holding some popping, holding, <laughs> is by having a booth or having some sort of presence at a market or art fair, farmers markets, city fairs, art fairs, those sorts of things. I have never personally done one of those, 
but I know that there are some artists that make great money or meet great contacts through those art markets or fairs, etc. cetera. Um, so maybe they don't make any sales at the actual market themselves, but they meet somebody who wants to commission them for a piece that's going to be $1,000 or something. That would be really valuable or even $400 or $200. So, you know, see, look around at your local city or town or whatever and see if they have any sort of art fairs or markets or anywhere local to you that you could display some of your prints, some of your original pieces of artwork, have some business cards, or at least some form of takeaway so they can remember your contact information. And you never know what can come of it. And I know a lot of people make a really great um, income from having presence at markets and art fairs. The fourth way is through teaching. So probably seven years ago, I started teaching in-person workshops. I started with teaching calligraphy and then I got asked a few months later to teach floral watercolor and I've been teaching workshops ever since. It's led me to countries like Australia and Bali and Singapore, France, um, Canada, etc. to teach these workshops to people at venues um, for three hour workshops and I'll teach them calligraphy or watercolor. It has not only allowed me to travel the world, but it has also allowed me to grow my business in ways that I wouldn't have been able to if I was just posting my products or posting my work. Because when you're teaching workshops, the people that show up to workshops, workshops love to gram that they're at a creative workshop. So they're spreading the word for you and tagging you usually, especially if you mention that. But teaching is a great way for you to hone and, and master your craft. Um, because you're having to break it down into simple steps and teach it to beginner level people or whatever. Um, you're really getting to know and master your craft really well. And so workshops are, I mean, in my heyday when I was doing workshops all the time, I'd walk away after teaching one work workshop with thirteen with three thousand dollars, not thirteen hundred dollars, three thousand dollars, which is huge as an artist. And after you pay off your supply costs, it's a good way to make money. So if you're wondering how to get into teaching workshops, you could start by looking at local shops that have enough space to hold tables for 15 to 20 people or however many people you think. Um, you can rent event spaces and just make sure you factor in all your costs so that you don't just break even, but you make money. I have an entire workshop checklist for you that will link below that gives you all of the prepping steps, all of the steps for promoting and all of the steps for teaching an in-person workshop. So you go into it really, really prepared and you don't forget one single thing for your next in-person workshop or for your very first in-person workshop. So make sure you sign up for that below. It has every step you would need in order to get started with teaching workshops. And then along with that, there's online classes. Online classes are amazing ways to make money as an artist. You can, if you don't have an audience yourself, you can host or list your own online class on a place like Skillshare, which has millions of users. And if you're utilizing the Pinterest keyword research guide that we have linked below that I already mentioned, and you are using those tips in that guide for writing your descriptions and product titles in Skillshare or wherever you're listing your artwork or online classes, these are search engines like Pinterest. And so if you're utilizing those strategies for keywords, you become way more discoverable. And so if you have a class on Skillshare, you want to list a class on Skillshare, um, just make sure you're referencing that guide so you know how to properly optimize your descriptions and your titles of your online class so that they become way more discoverable on these platforms. And then if you decide, I have an audience, maybe you have 10,000 followers on Instagram or you have a couple thousand uh, subscribers on an email list or whatever, and you don't wanna split the revenue with an outside host for your online class, you can list it on your own website and keep 100% of that revenue. It is a lot more work on the back end, I will say, but you get to keep 100% of the revenue. So if you have any number beyond 250 to 500 people, subscribe to your email list or a couple thousand on Instagram. This is what I recommend. Try out both, try out Skillshare and on your own platform. Cause again, hosting on your own platform is a lot of work speaking from experience. Um, but you do get to keep hundred percent of the revenue and you don't have to split with a place like Skillshare. Online classes have been hands down the best way for me to scale my business and not only scale in a way that, um, you know, just makes this bigger machine that I have to keep up with on the day to day. It's allowed me to take a step back and work less because I, for the first five, six years of my business, I felt like I was constantly working, working myself to the bone and 
being able to teach online classes has been has allowed me to fill in some parts of that revenue so that I can take a step back and not feel like I'm chained to my desk all the time. So online classes and teaching workshops are huge for that. Again, sign up for that checklist below. That'll be really impactful for both your workshops and your online classes. And if you're curious, you wanna check out um, how I go about online courses, et cetera, I have four. My fourth is coming out in March of 2020, which is all about teaching workshops and online classes. So if you really wanna know how to do it, you should definitely sign up for that course. Um, but I have that course. I have an online course called Pen to Press, which teaches artists and designers how to make paper products and create and design custom wedding stationery and greeting cards from pen to press and printing and all of that. And then I have a course on licensing, which I already mentioned called Brand Plus Brand. And my fourth class, which is a marketing and sales course for creatives called Instagram for Creatives, teaches people how to bring their followers on Instagram off onto an email list and something that they own like an email list. So those are my courses, check them out, we'll have them linked below. And then the fifth way to make money as an artist is through design services. So if you're not a designer, this might not apply, but it's something to think about if you are an artist, about how you can make more money as an artist is if you do know a program, if you do know Adobe programs like Illustrator, Photoshop, et cetera, because then you can create wedding stationery or you can design logos for people um, or, you know, any sort of business material, printed material, stuff like that. So I did wedding stationery for probably the first five years of my business. And this was a great way for me to sustain myself as a creative in business and scale because it's what helped me grow my audience along with workshops, et cetera. But um, like learning how to get my watercolor on this tissue paper and my illustrations on a wax seal, et cetera. I cover all of this in my online course, Pen to Press. So if you're an artist and you don't know how to design paper products, uh, you don't know how to use Illustrator or Photoshop or even how to scan your artwork, that course teaches you all of that. So definitely check that out if you wanna learn how to do that and you can make six figures like I did on being a wedding stationer. Pretty great. Then my sixth and final way for making money as an artist is writing a book. You can do self-published or you can do traditional publishing like I have. I have an episode on my podcast coming out with my literary agent, Kimberly Brower. So make sure you, sub you sub <laughs> so make sure you subscribe to my podcast so you don't miss those episodes. Um, but writing a book is a great way to not only make money, you get royalties on sales if you're going traditional publishing route or you get 100% of the sale cost, you know, beyond what you had to pay to get it printed and all of that, unless it's an ebook, then you don't have any overhead. Um, but a book is a great way to make money, but also to broaden your expertise and your audience. Because if you're working for a publisher, for example, they have marketing teams. And so they are talking about your book, they're getting your book in stores. And then if you're doing self publishing, and you list it on, let's say Amazon, and you're using that Pinterest keyword research guide, because Amazon is also a search engine, um, then you can be discovered by people who are searching for how to watercolor books or how to, or maybe it's not a how to book. Uh, I don't know what you would write about, honestly. I wrote how to watercolor books. And if you don't have these books, make sure you check them out. We'll link them below um, if you wanna learn watercolor or watercolor flowers. So this is my very first book that came out in 2017. I um, work with the publisher 10 Speed Press, which is an imprint of Penguin Random House. And this is a 30 paintings in 30 days book. So I go over everything from beginner level watercolor. So everything that's introductory, like techniques, uh, brush techniques, the supplies to use, color theory, um, color mixing and shading, et cetera, for abstracts and basic florals. And then we get more complex and show more in-depth florals, more realistic florals, also animals and landscapes in this book. And then this is my second book with 10 Speed Press, Everyday Watercolor Flowers. And like you might guess, it is all about flowers. So loose style of watercolor and realistic style watercolor flowers. So we have, you know, parrot tulips, ranunculus, uh, dahlias, orchids, camellias, etc. In this book, make sure you check it out. We'll have the links to those on Amazon for you to check out. They're also available at your local book bookstore, possibly. Definitely the bigger ones like Barnes and Noble, etc. But check your local bookstore, support small business and all of that, they should have some.
there you have it. There's six ways to make money as an artist or designer. We've got the prints, we've got the original pieces, the commissions, the licensing, the art fairs and markets, the teaching workshops and online classes, the design services, and books. If you are an artist or designer or some sort of creative, and you have an additional way that you make money, please let us know in the comments. I love supporting this community and seeing it thrive. And so it might be really beneficial or helpful to somebody reading these comments, um, seeing your advice or suggestions that you have in your own business for a way to make money. So leave that comment below and let's help this community thrive as creative business owners. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.